Hello everyone! A lot of you have requested this game already, well, maybe even a match uh, to show a couple of games, uh, Gary Kasparov vs Deep Blue. Uh, before I show you the game and tell you a, a little bit about this match, I just wanted you to know that uh, the Amazon gift cards have been sent away and that the championship chess set is also on its way to Lukajovic. So I think that uh, takes care of the prizes and once again congratulations to the winners of the giveaway. Now on to this match, uh, Kasparov played two matches against uh, IBM's Deep Blue, one in 1996 and one in 1997. Uh, the one in 1996 was play played in Philadelphia and uh, it's considered not to be Deep Blue, it's considered to be Deep Thought, because uh, the one in 97 was like an upgrade, so that one is called Deep Blue. And uh, Kasparov won uh, the match in 1996 uh, with a result of 4-2. And uh, out of those six games, uh, Kasparov offered a draw in game five, and uh, Deep Blue refused, well, Deep Thought uh, ref refused the draw. So uh, Kasparov managed to win uh, game five with the black pieces, and then, of course, won game six with the white pieces. So it was a pretty clean victory for uh, four against two, you know, uh, against the supercomputer. Uh, and then IBM, uh, well, requested a rematch in 1997. This was the upgraded Deep Blue. Uh, and uh, unlike uh, for the first match in 1996, uh, where Kasparov lost the first game in 1997, in in, in round one, uh, Kasparov won uh, uh, the first game. Uh, then uh, the Blue won the second game. Then three games were drawn, and uh, the result is two and a half to two and a half. And this is game six. So let's see this uh, historic game six. Uh, and uh, why do I say historic? Uh, because this uh, 1997 match, Gary Kasparov versus Deep Blue, is the first time in history that a computer managed to win a match against uh, a reigning world chess champion. Uh, so let's see this beauty. Uh, Deep Blue has the white pieces, uh, and she, it, he, wh whatever you want to call it, uh, it plays e4. Uh, we have c6, d4, and d5. In game 4 of this match, Kasparov tried d6, but here he goes for d5. Uh, knight to c3, we have d captures on e4, knight captures on e4, and the knight to d7. Kasparov goes for the Karpov variation. Uh, we have knight to g5, now knight to g to f6, uh, bishop to d3, Kasparov goes e6, uh, and knight 1 to f3. And here uh, Kasparov has a lot of options uh, to go for. He can go for bishop to d6, he can go for queen to c7, uh, he can even go to for something like bishop to b4 check, uh, but Kasparov played a move that I'm pretty sure he wouldn't play against a human player. He played h6, uh, thinking that uh, there is no way that uh, well uh, th that a computer uh, will take advantage of this and uh, sacrifice a piece. But uh, that's exactly what happened. Uh, in this position, Deep Blue played knight captures on e6, and uh, Kasparov played queen to e7. Of course, you don't you don't want to capture f captures on e6. Uh, you get bishop to g6 check, and after king to e7, bishop to f4, and your position is uh, extremely hard to play. You can't develop any of the pieces. The rooks are staying where they are. This bishop can't go anywhere. So this would be very pleasant for white. So after knight captures on e6, Kasparov played queen to e7. Now pinning this knight. Uh, deep blue now castles, and we have f captures on e7. Uh, of course, you don't want to capture with the queen. Unfortunately, you have to mess up your pawn structure because queen e6 and then rook e1. Uh, so after castles, Kasparov played f captures on e6, and now of course he had to allow bishop to g6 check, uh, king to d8, and now bishop to f4. Now uh, putting his bishop on this beautiful diagonal, guarding c7, uh, not allowing the king to leave the center of the board. Uh, we have b5 by Kasparov. Uh, going for some bishop b7, maybe bishop a6 idea, and trying to get the king uh, somewhere to the queen side, to a safe place. Uh, a4, uh, deep blue immediately wants to bust open the queen side pawn structure. Uh, bishop to b7, and now rook to e1. Uh, deep blue is preparing bishop to f5 to pin this uh, e a pawn on e6. Uh, we have knight to d5 now, attacking the bishop uh, on f4. Uh, bishop to g3, of course, deep blue doesn't want to give up this powerful bishop. Uh, king to c8 now by Kasparov, and we have a captures on b5. Uh, c captures on b5 and queen to d3. Uh, now, it, uh, threatening to capture this uh, b5 pawn. 
and uh, here Kasparov played bishop to c6. Uh, maybe maybe a maybe a better idea was something like uh, knight to c7, uh, but then y you get rook to a3. Rook is coming to c3, and this will be very 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 hard to play for Black. This bishop is still lying c7. Uh, so instead, Kasparov after queen to d3 played bishop to c6. And uh, now bishop, bishop to f5, uh, deep blue pins this pawn, and uh, Kasparov decides uh, to give up the queen uh, for a bishop and a rook. Uh, he played e captures on f5, giving up his queen. Uh, he could have played something like knight to b4, but this doesn't really go in his favor. Okay, this does give you a tempo on the queen, but now not, uh, queen to c3. Uh, you're threatening. Uh, you're threatening the knight. You're threatening the bishop with the queen. After the knight moves, uh, the e6 pawn is still attacked. And uh, after something like uh, a5, uh, rook captures an e6. And if you want to play something like queen to d8 to try and uh, save everything, uh, rook captures on c6. If you capture a knight, capture c6. Queen c6 leads to checkmate. Uh, queen c7. Queen captures on c7. And uh, after rook captures on c6, if you play king to b7, then bishop to e4, and uh, you're you're losing this game very hard. Uh, so after bishop to f5, Kasparov decided not to go for any of this. He played uh, e captures on f5, uh, rook captures on e7 by d blue, and now bishop captures on e7. So okay, Kasparov has a rook uh, and two pieces for the queen. Uh, but here, this is move 19, d blue plays c4. And uh, in this position, uh, on move c4, Kasparov resigns the game. Uh, the world champion decides that in this last game, there is there is no chance for him to continue this fight. Uh, if he managed to to draw this game, uh, it would uh, you know uh, the end result in a match would be a draw. He wouldn't lose the match because in the end uh, he lost the match three and a half to two and a half. Uh, but what happens now? Uh, well, if something like b captures on c4, then queen, queen captures on c4, threatening the bishop here. Um, and after knight to b4, protecting the bishop, uh, rook to e1, now threatening to grab the bishop and then the knight. And after something like rook to e8, you simply uh, grab it, uh, rook captures, queen captures. Uh, now you're threatening the rook on e7. Uh, also ideas like queen a5 to queen uh, c7 checkmate are here. So after something like king to d8, uh, you can always play bishop to h4, pinning the rook, g5, knight captures, uh, h captures, bishop captures, uh, this rook is, you know, going to be captured with check, and uh, Kasparov decided not, not to go for any of this. So after c4, uh, he decided to, to forfeit the, the, the game, and uh, deep blue was the winner of the 1997 uh, match. And of course, Kasparov was very angry. Uh, he said that there is no way that uh, that a computer can play a game like this, such a highly tactical game. Uh, you know, to decide a gi to give up a piece. Uh, computers in those days were extremely materialistic. So Kasparov, uh, you know, said that uh, the Deep Blue was probably aided by other grandmasters, uh, which is you know to be expected, I guess. Uh, some some people even say that uh, IBM uh, had Bobby Fischer, that Bobby Fischer was uh, giving them moves for IBM to play, you know, uh, so, some some chess fun. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game you requested, the Garrick Power versus Deep Blue. Uh, if you want to see any other games uh, from the 1997 or the 1996 match, just write something, uh, you know, in that fashion in the comment section. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Eric Wilkinson, uh, Bolivar Luis uh, da Costa Vieira, and uh, Antonio Kouri for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.